All right, next up, uh, this one from SXLL and then a bunch of Ys. It's for Dominic Reyes. How do you plan to exploit John's poor defensive and offensive boxing? It's, it's no secret that John isn't the best boxer in the UFC. Um, he's a great kickboxer. He has great range. He uses his kicks very well but he's not the best boxer. Um, and I intend to exploit that. I think my boxing is probably the best in the division and uh, with footwork and uh, fearlessness, I'll get in there and uh, put these hands on him. So for you, Dominic, this is from Jesse underscore Regina. Do you see John as style-wise your most challenging fight to date? Well, absolutely. Uh, it's John Jones, man, I mean. He's, he hasn't been the king for as long as he has for no reason. Um, Style-wise, it's a very, very tough matchup, but uh, I'm ready for the challenge, man. For Dominic, uh, I, I want to ask you, I mean, um, when you look at John's fights and you see the, the wins that he's had, do you see like a commonality among all the opponents? I mean, is there a mistake that everybody has made or most people have made against him? I think the most common mistakes all his opponents make is uh, they let doubt creep in. They let the John Jones monster get in their heads and uh, they start doubting themselves within the fight and then uh, he takes over. And then once he takes over, you're not coming back. And as you were kind of putting together a game plan, I mean, obviously we've seen what he's accomplished and how great his record is. I mean, do you see a real weakness in his game that you feel like you can exploit or is it, is it a matter of, you know, just having to go out there and fight a, a perfect fight to beat this guy? Um, it's a little bit of both. There's holes in everybody's game. You know, I can't exactly tell you exactly what my game plan is, but uh, there are holes. Um, and it's a combination of watching everybody fight him, and it's kind of putting everything together. I, he has so much film on him, and I'm, I'm able to get that film, break it all down, figure out all the probabilities, all the statistics on his fights, and uh, put it together. But at the same time, I gotta be the best version of myself, and I have to fight a near perfect fight as well. Uh, nobody's perfect, but I gotta be close. Nice. And I guess maybe outside of, you know, game plans and style and training, what's the, the biggest piece of advice Joe Stevenson has given you? Believe in yourself, kid. Anthony Smith was, was on Ariel's show on Monday talking about how uh, he felt like John Jones tried to play mind games with him uh, uh, during fight week when, when he fought him. And uh, everything has to be kind of on, like, Jones' schedule. Have you felt that at all now that you're here in Houston? Do you feel like that Jones is trying to play mind games with you? Uh, no. I mean... I do my I do my things on my schedule. Uh, this is my fight, so Jones Jones can't touch me. How, how do you plan on displaying the mama mentality that Kobe Bryant left us before he left this earth and displayed it Saturday on this big stage in the biggest fight of your career? I'm chasing greatness, man, and I'm, I'm I believe in myself more than anybody could believe in me. You know, it's about me. It's about the hard work I did, the mama mentality comes from the hard work I've done in this camp. You know, I'm, I'm ready to go. The work I've done has been done. Now, I just gotta believe, and I believe. Oh man, I believe. I can't wait, man. Do you think to, to, to shock the world, we're, we're not gonna make this an MMA fight, you just gotta take chances and do some stuff that nobody's done to John, John even risk getting the, being on the wrong end of the, of the knockout, but to put him in comfortable positions to shock the world. Cause it seems like people turn into sparring partners with, when they fight him. It's kind of the same, same too for uh, Caitlin. What do you have to do to keep from being sparring partners with these great fighters that y'all fight on Saturday? No, I agree with that statement, absolutely. Um, a lot of people end up turning into a sparring match. I'm, I'm willing to go in there and uh, get knocked out if I have to. I mean, you gotta put yourself in danger. It, it's the biggest risk, it makes the biggest reward. So uh, I'm ready to go out there and throw down, man. I'm ready to bleed as much as necessary. During the countdown, they showed you on a bike watching John Jones, like in his fights. But I'm curious, even before you were booked to fight him, between fights, how closely were you studying John Jones for a possible future fight? So, as I've come up through my UFC ranks, I've kept an eye on John, but I haven't exactly studied him like this. Um, I'm focused on my next task at hand. And in order to get to the top, you've got to focus on the next step in front of you. So I've been focusing on those steps. I, I can see the top, but I'm focused on what I gotta do. 
and uh, that's what I've been doing. And then after your knockout of Chris Weidman, you tweeted uh, like Southpaw precision and like a gif of the knockout. And since watching John Jones's last fight, he hasn't really fought a lot of straightforward southpaws, a lot of switches. I think uh, Ovin St. Pru and Lyoto Machida and maybe had not his best performance into those outside of the choke. So I'm curious, is, uh, is a facing a southpaw a kryptonite of John Jones? I'm not, uh, we'll find out on Saturday, man. I'm, I'm a true southpaw, so uh, we got that. This, I got this left hand with me right here and uh, we'll see what happens.